today we're going to talk about radical exponents and expressions. And radical exponents basically mean fractional or rational exponents. So when you have some base to a fractional exponent, that's like taking the root of the exponent. So what that means, when you have something like 81 to the 1 half power, that's like taking the square root of 81. Remember, we don't write the root 2 there. We just leave that alone. It's an implied root 2, which means that that is 9. Or something like 27 to the 1 third power. That's the cube root, or three of the same things that multiply to be 27. And that just happens to be, um, not 27, that just happens to be 3. So there's special names. If n, if it's 1 over 2, that means it's a square root. If it's 3, that means it's a cube root. If it's anything larger than 3, like for example, the fourth root of 81, that's for the same things that multiply to be 81. Or what you can think about it as is try and put 81 to the fourth power. 81 is 3 to the fourth. Well, 3 to the fourth to the 1 fourth, multiply the exponents, you get 3. So what this applies to is if you have an exponential. And for example, something like 2 to the 6th, which is 64, the corresponding root would be 64, the fourth root, I'm sorry, the sixth root of 64 is going to equal 2. So there's a lot of common roots that you need to know. What do I want you to know? I want you to know 2 to the 2nd through 2 to the 10th. So you need to know those exponentials and thus the corresponding roots. 3 squared through 3 to the 4th. 4 squared, 3rd, and we'll just say 4 to the 3rd. 5 to the 1st through maybe... 5 to the 5th, 6 to the 2nd, 6 to the 3rd, 7 2nd, 7 to the 3rd, 8 2nd, 9 to the 2nd, and then all the powers of 10. So, you know, maybe 10 to the 1st through 10 to about the 10th, but those are fairly easy. So those are the common exponentials and thus the common roots that I expect you to know. Okay, first example, the sixth roots of 64. So basically what I want you to know is 64 to the 1 sixth, or the sixth root of 64. Now you can memorize all of them, or you can break it down. 64, break it down into 8, times 8. 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So 64 is really 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the 6th root of 2 to the 6th that's like saying to the 1 6 power, you can multiply those exponents because you have a power to a power, so you get 2. But also, this is a little tricky, it is also plus and minus. If this is an even root, it's both possibilities, plus and minus, versus if it's an odd, it goes with the same sign that you have. So negative 2, 16, your answer is going to be negative. Because I know here, negative 2 to the 6th power is going to be 
a positive 64. And also 2 to the 6th power is going to be 64. Now, cube roots. Okay, so cube root. Third root of negative 2 to 16. Okay, so break negative. Let's just, we know what the answer is going to be negative. Let's break 216 down. Let's break 216 down into 6 times 36. 36 breaks down into 6 times 6. So this is like saying negative 216 is like saying negative 6 to the third. So the cube root of negative 6 to the third is negative 6. And again, notice how I've been saying, well, I haven't been saying these are non-calculator, but now I've highlighted these are non-calculator. Cube root of negative 125. So what number to the third power is negative 125? That's negative 5. And again, it's just really about memorizing. 1,024. Start breaking that down. 1,024, 4 goes in. 256 times. Break that down. Again, try 4 again since we're looking for the same number. Let's 64. 4 times 64 is 256. 4 times 16 and 4 times 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be 4 now, notice how this isn't plus or minus. When we're asking for the roots, we wanted the plus and minus. When you're finding the value, you're just finding the positive version. Or if there's a negative inside, that's going to be a negative. Now, if you have a fractional exponent, again, these are non-calculator questions. What you do is you first find the root inside. That makes the number smaller, then take it to the power. Because you really have two options here. You have, you could do 81. To the third, then the fourth root of that. But I can't do 81 to the third without a calculator. And then having to find the fourth root of that, that's really complicated. But if you find the fourth root of 81 first, that's going to make that a smaller number. The fourth root of 81 for the same things that multiply to be 81, well, that's 3 cubed is 27. Next example, right? As a rational exponent, simplify appropriately. So I have 13 to the 4 and the 8, the root goes in the denominator. So I have 13, reduce that fraction to the 1 half. That's like saying the square root of 13. I can't do anything else with that, so we are done. 3 to the 15 over 5. Again, this root goes in the denominator. Reduce that. 3 to the 3rd. That's going to be 27. Now some rules, or some review of the rules of exponentials. So if you have the same base, you add the exponents. If you have the same base and you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. If you have a power to a power, I've kind of already reviewed this with you guys, you multiply the exponents. When you're dividing and you have a power outside, you can distribute that power. If you have a times b to the n, you can distribute that power to both. And the same thing follows. If I have a to the n times b to the n, I can go the other way. This is equal to a times b all to the n power. Because we're going to be doing a lot of going the other way. We're going to be starting with this and going to that. So our big mystery is that these rules are the same for fractional exponents. 
so here, I can distribute this one-third to everything. Don't forget to distribute it to the number. So the cube root of 18, that's 3. I'm sorry, that's 2. 8 to the 9th to the 1 -third. Multiply the exponents. I get 8 to the 3rd. B to the 3rd to the 1 -third. We get B. So we are done. Our next example. Simplify the expression. Now we are dividing. So simplify the numbers just like you normally would. 8 over 4. That simplifies to be 2. Now, x squared over x to the 4th squared minus 1 fourth. And I'll simplify that in a minute. y to the 6th times y to the 5th, 6 minus 5. And then we have that z squared just hanging out because there's nothing to combine it with. So now we have the 2 x squared minus 1 half. That's going to be x to the, I'm sorry, it's 1 fourth. Um, so that is 8 fourths minus 1 fourth. That's 7 fourths. So x to the 7 fourths. y to the first z squared. Now that x, that has a radical attached to it. So... That's like saying the fourth root of x to the seventh. Now, just as when we're doing something like root 12, you have to pull out any perfect squares. So root 12, we would simplify into 4 times 3, because 4 is a perfect square. That simplifies to 2 root 3. There's this perfect fourth root in there. Remember, split this up into two things where one is the exact same root that you're trying, the ex exponential of the same root that you're trying to find. And since when you're multiplying, you add the exponents, this has to be x to the third. So then that simplifies the fourth root of x to the fourth. That's just going to be x, y, z squared times the fourth root of x to the third. So make sure you're pulling out any perfect roots. So that's your, per that's your answer. Okay, same base. When they're the same base, you add the, and you're multiplying, you add the exponents. Two thirds plus one half. Two thirds plus one half. Same base, or same denominator. I need this to be a six, so I multiply by two over two. Multiply that by a three over a three. So that's seven, six. So that's seven to the seven, six. Or the sixth root of seven to the seventh. Now, the exponent inside, this is another way of thinking about it. The exponent inside is larger than the, expo than the root. So I know I have to pull out a perfect root. So that's the sixth root of 7 to the 6th times 7. The sixth root of 7 to the 6th is 7. And then the sixth root of 7. And that is your answer there. Oh, this is a good one. This one has a lot of stuff going on. So you have different bases, but they are to the same exponent. So remember that property that I was talking about, where you have a to the n over b to the n. That can be pulled out to the n. So let's just leave that 4 alone. We're going to have two sets of parentheses, you have 12 over 3 to the 1 sixth. 12 over 3, that's 4. 4 to the 1 sixth, then to the 4th, 
Well, that's going to simplify. Multiply the exponent. So you have 4. When you multiply 1 6 times 4, that's 4 6 Or 4 to the 2 thirds. Reduce that fraction. So that's the cube root of 4 squared. Cube root of 4 squared is 16. Okay. Remember, these are like saying both of them are to the one-third power. So then, 108 divided by 4 to the one-third power. Well, 108 divided by 4, that is 27. The cube root of 27 is 3. Our last example. Simplifying those radicals. Okay, so on the top, it's like saying x to the 12th, y to the 4th, to the 1 4th. On the bottom, we have 3 to the 1 4th. On the top, we multiply the 1 4th times the 12th. That gets you x to the 3rd, 1 4th times 4, that's y. On the bottom, we have 3 to the 1 4th. 3 to the 1 fourth is the same thing as the fourth root of 3. So that's like having a radical on the bottom. We can't have that. So I need to multiply by 3 to some power. Remember, when I'm multiplying the bases, I add the exponents. When I add those exponents, I need to get 1. So 1 fourth plus my new exponent has to be 1. Well, that new exponent, 1 fourth plus 3 fourths, I need to multiply by the same thing on the top and bottom, that's 1. So what I have going on here, on the bottom, I have 3 to the 1 fourth times 3 to the 3 fourths, and then on the top I have x cubed, y, and the fourth root of 3 cubed. So that is going to be, let me extend my page here, and let me move this guy down. So that is going to be x to the third, y, the fourth root of 27, when I add those exponents, 1 fourth plus 3 fourths, that's 4 fourths, so that's just 3. Part B. I wanted to do another one of these because these could be complicated. So you have x to the third to the one third, and you have y squared to the one third. So on the top, 3 times one third, that's 1. But now I have y to the two thirds. That's a fractional exponent. So really, there's a radical at the bottom. Again, like before, I need to multiply by something so that when I add, when I add the exponents, I get 1. So that needs to be 1 third, because 2 thirds plus 1 third is 1. So I have y on the bottom, x, and the cube root of y. That was a semi-long lesson. There are your lesson questions. Please make sure those are submitted on time.